Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I have a special treat for you on the channel. I have an in-depth, personal, and rather lengthy interview with John Kim, who you probably know better as Ezekiel Jones from TNT's The Librarians. It's not too often that I get to interview proper actors here on the channel, so that's it's pretty cool for me. And the interview just kind of starts off where we're like, I'm doing the get to know you thing. I haven't got to any questions, and it just it just goes. It was a great, fantastic interview, and I think you're really gonna like it. Uh, just so that you know me and I know you, real brief. Uh, my name is Brad, or Drifter. Drifter is Internet yep. Alias. Uh, I guess he already explained that to you. Uh, would you like anything <laughs> you want to tell me about yourself? Uh, nah, just, um, yeah, I'm just here to talk games and, and uh, right, cool. talk about the show, and yeah, pretty straightforward. Oh, oh so you're a gamer. Uh, yeah, actually, my first uh, retail job was EB Games, which is our version of GameStop. Like, Got it. Yeah, I think, we, I think we used to have that in the U.S. briefly, but then they, like, restructured, and it's EB yeah. everywhere else in GameStop here. Yeah, 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 yeah. We uh, we got get EB, and yeah, I was there for like five years. So, oh boy, I know a little uh, bit. Was that was that a good bit. experience or a bad one? In the U.S., it's usually not a great experience. No, I, I had a good time. I, I um, you know, obviously trying to sell, you know, transparent guarantees and things like that wasn't really mm -hmm. part of the fun. But no, I, I liked video games going up. So yeah, I um, I had a great experience and. Yeah, yeah. Do you got you had to get those pre-orders, sign up for uh, uh, Game Informer magazine and that, all that. Or did you? Thanks. Was it a different uh, brand over there? Yeah, no, it's Game Game Informer. Yeah, they um, yeah, it uh, yeah, it wasn't fun doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I just like to like literally, I would just go up to customers and just talk about games all day. That was sort of what I enjoyed about the job. Good. That usually works better than the high pressure sales stuff anyway. Like, like, you, like as a consumer, when I would go into one of those places and a guy would hit me up like immediately for pre-orders and just kind of talk yeah. about nonsense, that's no good. But the better salesmen are people that'll talk to you and they'll get to know you and then they, they might actually yeah. find something that, that you would like based on those preferences. That works so yeah. much better. Yeah, for the most part, uh, we were taught to, you know, open with, you know, something like, oh, you know, did you want to put down a game uh, pre-order or a game guarantee on, on that game? And you know, I sort of would just kind of, I don't know, I would avoid doing any of that, really. I was a terrible employee, but um, I don't know, I had, a, I had a lot of nice customers and some that I actually became very good friends with. Good, 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 good. Uh, I, I had a question and then it went away. <laughs> you're right. No, you're right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, what games do you play? Um, now, currently. Like, right now, I just finished Shadow of Mordor and it's the okay. first game in, like, ages that I've done 100% completion. I'm just about to start Far Cry 4, so... I'll probably actually go pick it up later today. Um, okay, Far Cry 4, uh, I was thinking 3. I played 3. Far Cry 3 was excellent, and I hear good things about Far Cry 4. Yep. Uh, I, just, I had a lot of fun with that, especially how it took the weird, like, spiritual, like, hallucinatory kind of trip instead of just the straight-up shooter was really cool. Yeah, absolutely. And, and even just to see sort of Jason struggle. Like, he sort of, he, you kind of go on it with him where he, I don't know, gets a bit of Stockholm Syndrome in a sense. Um, yeah. So... Yeah. It gets no, used to I, what I, he's doing. It's kind of kind of like on The Walking Dead, how the people kill and they they get to a point where they get used to yeah, it and they start liking yeah, it. Exactly. Like Carl. Yeah, and you're like, how how do you enjoy that? But I guess you couldn't really tell unless you're in that situation. So. Well, that that kind of happens. Who are we to judge? Yeah, yeah like that, that that's a real thing that happens to people. I'm gonna talk about soldiers a little bit, and for the audience, I'm not bashing on soldiers. Uh, but there are some people that go, and they, they love combat. There are people that absolutely adore combat, and that's their favorite thing in the world, and that's just how it is. Um, you know, it's it's sort of it's it's a funny world we live in. But um, you know, I, I always try to make reservations before I actually, you know, experience things like that myself. So, yeah, definitely. Um, there's people that like weird stuff, but it's it's weird to us, but it might be normal to them, kind of thing. Yeah. Like, well, yeah. I'm not going to get too far into the weird stuff. <laughs> yeah. Do, uh, do you play multiplayer games at all, or just single player? Yeah, I play I play a bit of COD. Um, I oh, was good. actually yeah. I've okay. seen some of your videos. Uh, really? Was, okay, so this is yeah. unexpected. I'm all ears. <laughs> you could you could call me a fan. Um, <laughs> I love your point about the uh, the dual five sevens being very nice underrated gun in uh in COD uh, zombies. Um, I actually I sort of got over the zombies after World at War only because I played it so much because it's such a great concept and I'm yet to sort of reignite my passion for zombies. But um, yeah, I remember spending something like seven or eight hours straight on that when it first came out. Me and my friends sure. would tuck ourselves in the corner, and it was just uh, was so much fun. But you did Black Ops 2 Zombies, right? <laughs> haven't haven't no, tried it yet. Black Ops 1 we Zombies. Should, we should get together and play it. I, I, have, I have not tried Anytime, it yet. But you, well, you have, well, Australian Connection is going to be kind of rough. That's going to be... Yeah, ooh. we're behind 
our internet is so shockingly bad, and I'm not going to talk politics, but pretty much some some bad decisions were made, and and uh, I've, I've we're heard. we're still behind. You yeah, got, you guys have a, a bandwidth caps, right? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, really well, fun. I think so. Someone mentioned that some of our, like, uh, our internet is on par with some third world countries or something the other day. I don't know if that's particularly true, but it feels like it. Um, so I believe them. <laughs> well, you, you do have some, yeah, so Australia has the same problem the U.S. has. They're like, in the U.S., you're so rich and blah, blah, blah. Why is your internet so slow? And I'm like, our country's massive. We're like the size of Europe, and there's three, yeah. like, not nearly the same amount of people here. Like, could you imagine, like, people way out in the boonies in Australia in the outback trying to get internet? <laughs> it's the same problem. But you guys don't have that problem. You guys have this whole different, like, internet problem. Like, you have uh, bandwidth caps, and you have, like, we have bad monopolies. You guys have, like, super monopolies, and it's yeah, it's rough. Uh, yeah, do, it's they do, do they do restricting there, blacklisting, that sort of stuff? Yeah, I mean, um, it, I, I don't know if it's as strict, but... Um... Definitely, we have our sort of own issues and frustrations, especially as gamers, because, you know, I'll log in to play a game and it just kind of, it's frustrating knowing that, you know, even though it's not super important, I would, it'd be great. I would think that technology is at a level now that we could, you know, all be lag free, but, uh, well, you know. So that might be a different problem. Like, if you're talking about Call of Duty in particular, yeah. For whatever reason, people in Australia end up getting matched in Europe or in America, which isn't so great. Hold up, you froze. Uh-oh. Internet connection problem. I, th I think there is a conspiracy afoot here. Can you hear me? Oh, yep, yeah, sorry. I think dude, I lost as soon as we start talking bad about the internet, you cut out, dude. It's yeah. a conspiracy. <laughs> And I said, for some reason, Australians very frequently end up in my lobbies in Call of Duty when that really shouldn't be happening. Like, I know your player base isn't as big, but yeah, that's not ideal. Yeah, we need our own servers. It's unfortunate. Uh, we'll get there one day. One day. Or, maybe. Uh, do, you, uh, do you do League of Legends? Um, I don't. I was I was actually call me old, but I was actually really into the Dota fad when it first sort of came out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, buddy. Uh, but yeah, pretty much. Um, what happened was uh, I, I got once again I got I get bored very quickly, much like my character in the show. But um, yeah, I, I sort of got over it real real easily, and then uh, sort of Dota 2 came out, League of Legends, Heroes of New Earth, and I don't know, I just kind of never really got into them. But uh, you know, if anyone's free and wants to teach me, um, I've got all the time in the world. You so. should definitely give it a go. It eats a very abnormal amount of my free time. It's very much so like Dota. You can do Dota 2. You can just jump straight from Dota 1 to Dota 2. Are you yeah. saying you did Dota 1 like when it was like a Warcraft mod? or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. when you actually had to go into Reign of Chaos and then go in. Yeah, it was yeah. like a, it was actually just a created map. But um, Play the yeah, devil I mean, out now of that, man. It's, it's a, it's a huge deal now. Like you can win money. Like you can, you can. Oh, you win a it, lot of money, like millions yeah. of dollars. Or I don't yeah, know. Have I, you seen uh, the Korea, the, the the Korean teams? Like whenever oh. whenever they go to an event, they've got all these fan guys. Like oh, faker <laughs> senpai. Oh no. <laughs> and we lost audio. Uh, oh. There he goes. Yeah. Dude. Yep. I got you. These. It's these. It's the. It's the monopolies, man. They're trying to shut us down. <laughs> Oh good, they, they, yeah, they can hear us. Um, yeah. No, thank God, uh, thank God we have, um, you know, that sort of world where you can connect like that now. Like to network is so easy. Everyone is constantly connected through the internet all the time. So you know, something like that. I know, I, I know friends that have literally made some of their closest friends through the internet, and and you know. Uh, it's weird. I know some people are like, oh, that's so weird, though. You know, you have to meet them face to face. It's like, no, because they, you know, my mate wouldn't have had a chance to meet his best friend now in Germany if it wasn't for the fact that, you know, this sort of platform existed. So, oh, exactly. I mean, uh, we're talking internationally right now, very easily in a matter of minutes and completely free yeah. with video. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I do most of my business on the internet. It's free. Like, I know people in Germany. Um, as an adult, like, I'd, I'd already graduated from college, and when I did, all my friends moved totally different directions. Super easy keeping in touch on the internet, whereas previously they'd be lost forever. Definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I, I try not to spend... I try not to spend all my hours staring at a screen, but sometimes, you know, when you... Uh, especially me, I'm back and forth between Los Angeles and Melbourne that... You know, to, oh. start, to stay in touch. It's, How yeah, long it's, a flight it's, is that? That's something like 15, 16 hours direct. Um, I was really fortunate last time. I uh, I didn't get sat next to the crying baby. I got sat next to two. And uh, they were so perfectly <sighs> synchronized. It was like in perfect harmony that uh, it actually ended up being quite impressive. It was quite the show.
That's that doesn't sound very fun at all. The, the, the longest <laughs> flight I ever did, I took a I took a ten hour one back from London to the U.S. against the jet stream. Dude all on right. my left told me he was a retired tank driver, and he's this big burly dude. And he like sat his arms. He's like, "Hope you don't mind a little bit of guys touching you." He's like, "We did a lot oh. of that in the tank." I'm oh, like, yeah, well, that's yeah, yeah. great. And then the yeah. other dude was like from the Philippines or something. He was this huge, like Asian guy, like, like sumo size. He sits down and yeah. then like half of him spills into my seat. So I'm a skinny oh. guy and I'm sitting here for 10 hours like, oh, God. Oh, no. But not, yeah, you know, 15 I feel, hours. I, feel... I thought it'd be longer. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, uh, I, it, it's not bad. Um, I think it's an hour longer on the way back uh, just due to, I don't know, Coriolis or the wind or something. But, um, yeah, definitely uh, for me, I mean – I try not spend, like I said, I try not spend too much time looking at a screen. Sometimes I, I need to just to, you know, be in touch with family and friends. But um, at the same time, you, I, I like to, you know, uh, it's funny. My other job, uh, I worked at a surf store. So a lot of people say they're sort of opposite ends of the spectrum. And I'm sort of like, no, I mean, if everything's in moderation, you're fine. You know, I, um, I, I love going and hitting the coast up. I love playing sports. Uh, I'm a big Australian football and, and basketball fan. Um, uh, by football, so you mean what we would call soccer, correct? No, no. no? Uh, this is an Australian football. Okay. Um, I'm trying to I'm trying to make sure my users know. Uh oh. This okay. is uh we kick this thing uh through a set of four big sticks. You kick it through the middle two, it's six points, and one on either side, it's one. Is this rugby? Uh, what we would call rugby? This, no, this is Australian football. Australian Absolutely. football. Okay, I this I am totally ignorant of this concept. Please explain. <laughs> It's uh, it's crazy. We get some crowds up to you know over a hundred thousand. Um, it's 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 a big deal here. Uh, pretty much, it's funny. Yeah, I get uh, the usual response is, oh, um, you know, uh, isn't isn't that rugby? And I'm like, no, it's nothing like rugby. Like rugby is also considered Australian football, but this is a whole new sport and um, a whole whole different sport. Uh, it's definitely not new. It's been around since uh, probably early 1900s. But um, yeah, wow. definitely uh, check it out. Give it a YouTube. Um, yeah, you got to Google. Uh, we got to get some international exposure. Like when we're done here, I'm yeah. like, like Australian football? What is this nonsense? Like I've, I, the first time in my life I've ever heard of this. Yeah, no, it's, it's a lot of fun. And, and um, I've sort of shown a lot of my American mates to it and they sort of, they've taken to it. We have a, a league up in the States called the USAFL. And um, yeah, I, I, so I play wait, football. Wait. It's going to be the United States Australian Football League. There yes. You go. Yes. <laughs> I would play Australian football, you know, on Saturday mornings and then go hang out with mates after and, you know, literally kick it on COD for like five hours. So that was sort of my sort of childhood growing up. But then uh, it's funny. I literally, literally, uh, our mutual mate Patrick the other day was like, yeah, that's so funny that you worked at um, uh, EB Games and, an, and a surf store, uh, Osmosis. And I was sort of like, yeah, I mean, it's not actually that weird. I, I, a lot of the my mates from Osmosis would use my EB Games employee discount. So I find that stereotypes are just, they, they suck, really. <laughs> I don't want to get onto this whole, oh, I don't want to get onto this whole deep issue, but it, they're just like, it's funny. What, what stereotypes? I'm, I'm assuming Asian ones? Uh, I or mean, is it like I nerdy mean, ones or what do we got? I mean, oh yeah, absolutely. Like, I mean, um, even just like, you know, oh, you work at a surf store and a video game store. That's weird. And I'm like, no, it's not like they're, they're, I mean, I don't know. I, so, it's I a, that, so it's a lifestyle stereotype. These things are incompatible. I think so. I mean, yeah. I would get the Asian one a lot, and especially uh, in America, I guess, with the Australian accent, um, I don't think much of it, but then I get a lot of, like, triple takes, sort of like, did you just say that? Kind Not going like, to lie. First few yeah. seconds you threw me off, but then I was like, wait, the guy's from Australia. It would be ridiculous yeah. if he didn't have an Australian yeah. accent. <laughs> uh, my it's wife gets the same thing. So my wife's actually uh, Chinese, American Chinese. Uh, okay. she, she went to London. And, yep. But she spoke, she was from Mississippi, so she spoke Southern English out of, you know, Chinese face and mouth in London. It was like <laughs> blowing minds. They they didn't know yeah. what to what to think about it. It, it was, yeah. was kind of crazy. Or I yeah. got a lot of that crap in, in the South. Or some, some, some parts are better than others, but like, so I married, yeah. you know, my wife's Asian. We'd be in a yeah. store and I'd like walk up and give her a hug or touch her or something. And I would see yeah. like eight people like turn and look at me like I was a creep, yeah. like I was feeling her up because they didn't realize we were a couple. They didn't know that could be it's a thing. A racial couple, absolutely, yeah. yeah. No, nah, I mean, uh, I mean, as we go along, like I mentioned, stereotypes suck, and and as we go along, I find that more and more of them are being sort of knocked down. Um, that's the thing we love about our show uh, is that Christian Kane, uh, my co-star, is playing this Oklahoma, this uh, cowboy from Oklahoma. Yet he's this super nerd art historian, and 
for once, I mean, I, I don't know, I don't know too many examples of where they've cast the Asian character. Normally, he's the techie or the karate guy or the nerd, and I'm playing the biggest charismatic douche on the planet, and he's just <laughs> an absolute jerk, and I love it. Um, uh, they're they're changing I, that in America because the face, like the perception of Asians in America, is changing. Because one, we're getting a lot more immigrants. Uh, yep. So there's there's much more reason to please them instead of having them being a stereotype, and we're getting yep. a ton more like second and third generation. So all of the old yep. things from the culture that we would stereotype are totally yep. gone, and an American Asian is no different than like a, a, an American white or or black person like really going together. Yep. So they're trying uh, to make that be a more perceptible thing. It'll it'll get sort of better and better as we go along too. I I you know it, I I feel as though not just even Asians but in general. Um, I feel as though the world's just becoming so multicultural and so mixed and we're finding that people are opening up new avenues every day to lifestyles that don't sort of fit the medium uh, and, and everyone's sort of confused by it. One of my friends, uh, he's a Pacific Islander and they're generally known as, you know, these big, strong, you know, dudes who, you know, um, love a good time, that kind of stuff. And my mate is an absolute genius uh, and he... He sort of tells me every day, it's weird, I, he tells me people don't think I'm that smart just because of my ethnicity, but I'm sort of like, that's, I mean, screw that, and screw them, like, that's stupid. No, so, there's brilliant people of every race and type and all that sort of stuff, just, yeah, and no, then again, there's I'm, also morons of every <laughs> shape, size, and color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no shortage um, of them. Me included, I'm, I'm one of those Asians that can't add, so, uh, well, oh, no. uh, My wife fine. has the same problem, like, everybody expects her to be a math wizard, and <laughs> she it. takes it to me. It's, it's kind yeah. of embarrassing, actually. <laughs> uh, hold up, you, you cut. Uh, you there? Yep, now you're back. Sorry, it does that cool. sometimes, that, that conspiracy, man. It's the lizards, yep. the lizard people. Yeah, right. um, yeah, that's why I chose to be an actor. So, no, I, um, I definitely, uh, I don't feel as though I fit any stereotype, but at the same time, I feel like stereotypes should have been a thing of the past a long time ago. And just now, even now, with things like equal play, uh, equal pay for genders and things like that, um, it's getting better and better and better. And, and you know, I'm proud of the world. I think we're doing, we're not doing the best job we could be doing, but we're doing, we're, the, we're trying. The world still has plenty of problems. There's no shortage of problems in this world or bad things happening. Yes. But the general yeah, trend no. is is going good. But you don't talk about stereotypes again. So you're a gamer. The stereotype yes. for gamers is probably a little bit more like me, like you know, skinny white dude, hair collectible crap right, everywhere right. you know but the, the stereotype no, is no, you're, you're a real loser yeah. like you're a virgin you stay inside all the time blah 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 but you're yeah. a athlete surfer actor gamer and i'm like I, I i'm like i'm like i'm a i'm a techie gamer that goes together entrepreneur um engineer all this other sort of stuff and you look like 60 to 70 percent of males and like 20 to 30 percent of women are gaming now so the yeah. reality is that gamers are becoming everybody yeah i mean i think um the the term sort of nerd is thrown around a lot, but I, I find that sort of if you're a nerd about something, it means you just really, really, really like it. You're, sh you're just extremely passionate about it. And um, nowadays, you know, with the whole superhero movement and, you know, things like that, you know, it's cool to say I'm a nerd. And, and, and in fact, now the nerds, the ones that actually know stuff, are the ones with power because, you know, a, a girl a girl or a guy out there might say something like, um, you know, I'm a total nerd. I love this, and they might not know anything about it. And and but that's sort of what it is now to be sort of cool. So yeah, to be knowledgeable. I, I, yeah, I find it adorable. I'll end up dating a nerd, and I know I'm gonna love her. Um, well, but, that also happened know, because uh, like the nerds in like the 80s and 90s were the ones that got in the tech industry, so they got rich yeah. as hell. And then they yeah. and then their children were also nerdy and rich via their parents. So like yeah. Yeah. it it used to be like appeasing like the football like we'll say the average Joe American crowd. But then like yeah. somebody realized like oh my God we can make any superhero movie and they will buy it. We must appease these people and that affects the yeah. rest of the culture. Oh that stuff's cool now. It's it's awesome and 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 I I love that sort of that's the way that things are going. So yeah I mean uh it's funny for me because when I was growing up and. You know, I, I don't want to get deep and emotional or anything, but, you know, when I was, you know, not so well treated by other kids at school, um, video games for me provided a platform for me to lose myself in another world. And I grew up with things like Kingdom Hearts and, and you know, real fantasy type stuff. So uh, Final Fantasy, fantasy type stuff. I played um, those. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was just going to say for me, yeah, so during those sort of times, for me, video games provided uh, a lot of 
entertainment um, and a distraction. And once things sort of, uh, you know, people sort of matured and grew up and, and I sort of started making friends and things like that, um, it definitely, for me, I, I made sure to keep that sort of dimension to myself because that's who I am. I, I That's what I love. And even though at the time, you know, I might have, you know, copped a bit of shit for it, uh, excuse the swear word, uh, you know, Dude, I... It's YouTube. It, we're on YouTube. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> it doesn't I know, matter. It it's not TV. Uh, hi, YouTube. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, so I definitely, um, yeah, I definitely feel as though nowadays things are a lot more accepting and, and you know, I, I, I would feel more confident now growing up, um, seeing sort of my nephews and nieces and things like that growing up where being on the DS and things like that is cool and I'm just like, man, like... What was that when I was around, you know, when uh, when I was playing Pokemon Blue and things like oh, that? Oh man, so. Pokemon Blue. <laughs> I, had, I had Articuno. It was my, was my heavy hitter. Oh, I was a Moltres man. I'm sorry. Oh, so you you were my counter, or no? Yeah. But if we played, you would have lost because I was a dirt bag. I would catch missing number, and he would have this. <laughs> but but he would be at level like 143 or something, and I'd feed it yeah. rare candies all the way up to level like 259 or whatever. Uh, and then I would rename it something like Mew or Mew Three or whatever. So I would do the little, the little, the little land with the yeah. USB, and I would just drop out Mew Three, and kids wouldn't know what was going. on. I was like, oh, it's a secret Pokemon. You just can't see it. Like smack them with one move. Uh, you're dirty, mate. That's filthy. <laughs> oh I... my god. Um. <sighs> Sorry about that. It's it just Instagram. happens. It just happens, man. We're like how many th thousands of kilometers apart? Like. 40,000 uh, maybe? I definitely 20, couldn't 30? throw that far. I know that no. much. Um, yeah. Somehow um, the package I'll try make that. it. <laughs> okay. Actually, now that we, we've talked about a million other things, not even remotely related to the questions that I've got over here, yeah. I, I do have one to ask you. So I, I, is, is it safe to assume that you've been on like plenty of interview shows and like press stuff and like all that kind of stuff before? Um, I've done a fair few. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say plenty, but yeah. Okay. Well, sorry. <laughs> make me feel special here. Um, what, what's a, oh, you cut out, but that's okay. I'll read my question when, when it comes back. What's like a crazy yeah. or a cool story that you've wanted to tell that you've hoped that somebody asked for, but they never did. Like what's something that you've wanted to talk about on an interview type thing that just never, ever came up? Um, oh, that's an interesting question. Um, no, I'm glad, I'm glad to be sort of asked this on my first ever YouTube interview. Um, you're my first, I'm sure you get that all the time. Um, <laughs> so I'm thinking the greatest experience sort of uh, I got sort of uh, as a nerd. So what, what uh, I've never been asked, ha have I ever nerded out or anything like that, which I would have loved to, loved to have answered. Um, I met, uh, obviously, Jonathan Frakes while shooting the show. He was directing three of the episodes. And um, he invited me out to dinner one night. And it just so happened that uh, Robert Picard and uh, Paul Gio and Bruce Campbell were also in town, uh, and we ended up sort of doing a uh, a dinner together uh, along with Lindy Booth. And I don't know, I freaked out. Like, I, that's the first time I probably like fangirled. Like, I sort of, you know, grew up watching the Star Everything's, whether it was Trek Wars or um, or Gate. So yeah, I um, yeah, I definitely lost my mind a little with that one. Um, and I've never had a chance to tell that story, so no one even knows that I got to have this amazing, awesome dinner. And um, no one even got to hear about it. So, <laughs> well, what what amazing or awesome happened during the dinner? Or was it just like you were shocked at to like I've made it, I'm here? Uh, yeah, just even like just listening to their stories and stuff. So like um, you know, it, it sort of ga gave me something to strive for, something to aim towards. So I definitely am super grateful for that opportunity. And then you know, it was an amazing, it was an amazing dinner. And then and I was very lucky enough to work with two of them. And and yeah, um, I. I don't know. It was it was it was crazy. I'm a very lucky person, and I'm very grateful. Glad to hear it, man. I think I have some other random. I think we literally hit every single question I had without even looking at this thing. Except you've talked almost nothing about the librarians, which we're supposed to promote this show. Yeah, this is uh, this is kind of important. Um, we'll do a quick spill. I, okay. Uh, so I, I don't know if you guys have caught it yet. Hi, YouTube. Uh, I'm John Kim. I'm currently on a show called The Librarians, as Drift has probably already mentioned. Um, pretty much uh, the show is based around this library, which is responsible for protecting the world's secret and magical powerful artifacts. Um, 
and we're responsible for making sure that they don't end up in the wrong hands. Um, so right now, we're actually up to the season finale. Uh, it's a double episode, and it'll be this Sunday on TNT, 8, 7 Central. And, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. You're going to get to see a couple different sides of our characters. And um, for those that have been watching, thank you. And I, I extremely appreciate it. And you know I already love you because I keep posting every day that I love you guys. But, um, yeah, um, it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of good elements to it, like... Uh, a bit of Indiana Jones, a bit of Doctor Who, um, a bit of Warehouse 13. So, yeah, there's there's definitely a lot of elements from a lot of popular nerdy shows that um, I think yeah, you guys will seemed, really enjoy. It did seem like in the, in the same tone as Warehouse 13 when I when I was first reading about it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I get a lot of, uh, oh, you guys are just like Warehouse 13. And I'm sort of um, like, <laughs> I, I think the first Librarian movie came out in 2004. And yeah, I, I remember that. It was like reference. The Librarian. Yeah. It had this kind of weird, like, trailer I saw on TV is like, Bookworm by day, Demon Slayer by night, <laughs> The Librarian, yeah, something yeah, like that. Yeah, that's Noah Wiley, that's not even him acting, no. Um, <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, I, I, and then I think I'm pretty sure our concept was similar to something probably back in the 90s or even the 80s, so I, I feel like um, everyone has a different take on this crazy cool idea where it's like a new adventure every week, a, a new artifact, a new, you know, mystery. Um, and I think uh, I think we do a pretty go good job of it. I, I think the team and the cast and the crew have done amazingly well, and I'm just so lucky to be a part of it. You know, I'm good. I'm extremely grateful, as I mentioned. Good, good. And you fly to LA to film, right? Yeah, uh, actually, no, we film in Portland, so okay, two so hours you, north of LA. So you fly to LA and then up to Portland, or do you just fly straight to yeah. Portland? Straight to Portland. All of it's shot in Portland, um, and Portland's amazing. Uh, I've only ever driven first... through it. I never stayed. Sorry. You need to you need to hang around. You're uh, you haven't lived yet. Um, no, I uh, I think uh, Portland well, for me was a really good place to start off because it was away from the hustle and bustle of LA, and um, yeah, it worked out really well. And and I got to you know find some of my favorite restaurants and cafes up there, meet some good friends, and and you oh, know they've, got, they've definitely, definitely got interesting food up there. Yeah, I, I found I found that a lot of it was privately owned, which sort of made it feel less corporate and commercial. So the the effort was there, the love was there, and and uh, that sounds so cheesy, but you know, screw it. <laughs> no, it, a lot of a lot of the best places to eat are like little hole in the wall places that you find in just strange areas. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And 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 as a shooting location, it was perfect as well because you're an hour from the coast, an hour from. Uh, oh, yeah, so you like to surf, so you just go over the yeah. coast. Uh, yeah. um, an hour from uh, Mount Hood, which is a snow mountain, uh, an hour from the desert, and trees everywhere. So we had everything we needed to shoot. We had all these different climates. And, um, yeah, we, we, I think, um, I, think I, I would definitely love to come back to Portland and shoot, shoot something again, whether it's another season or something else. Okay. I was about to ask, like, if, if you keep doing this, would you like to move there? Just an idea so you wouldn't have to fly all the time. A lot of YouTubers have kind of decided to move from other countries to the U.S., yeah, I mean, uh, Portland, uh, I would absolutely live in Portland. Um, a lot of my mates are in Los Angeles, though, and sort of a lot of my work casting is done in Los Angeles. But I know that uh, Bruce Campbell lives in Oregon, and he loves it there. So, you know, uh, I, I definitely do, too, and I can see why he does. Didn't he grow up there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, a, he's, a lo he's a local boy, I think. Yeah, because I think, lo like, The Evil Dead actually was filmed just, like, right around Oregon in some little shack they found. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nah, Bruce is amazing. I know, uh, I know a lot of uh, uh, people out there are Bruce Campbell fans, and and uh, I just need to tell you guys, it, he is as amazing as he appears to be. He's a legend. Good to hear. Never met the guy. I, I missed the. I just the cons and stuff. I missed opportunities a time or two. And it, it's. Yeah. I don't think it, it sounds so hipster and like elitist. I wouldn't like to meet somebody in like a con environment where there's a line of like 500 people. It's like, hey, nice <laughs> to meet you. Here's the five dollar autograph, kind of thing. Um, yeah. Like an actual I, personal meeting would be so much better. And you cut out. And then cool. you're back. We're good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I met Hulk Hogan like that at uh, New York Comic Con last year where they, they sent the librarians over. And, um, yeah, I, I was a big pro wrestling fan. So sort of seeing him in person and his huge muscles and his huge sort of, you know, uh, just a big rig. He's a, he's a truck. Um, that was kind of crazy. He shook my hand, and I'm pretty sure, like, I lost my hand for, like, a good two seconds there. But... Uh, He's a, he's he's a, he's a character. Yeah, I haven't I haven't really seen like hardly any celebrities. I, in LA once I saw Ed Helms and he was yeah. like he was like lost in the airport talking on his cell phone about something and that was <laughs> like what am I I'm not going to go bother the guy. That's it. That's yeah. all of my amazing uh, celebrity encounters blah blah blah. That 
don't worry. I'm, I'm, I, I like to think that I'm like not, uh, I'm not a bad actor, but I'm a terrible celebrity. So uh, I, I sort of despise the word. So uh, we can, we can hang out any day, any day you want. <laughs> good, good. It's kind of weird though, because like doing the YouTube thing, you get a lot more people watching than you would think. I've had people stop me in public and recognize me from the internet. That's yeah. very strange. You're, you're... You're a bigger name than me, I'd say, because I knew of you before you knew of me. But um, it's all, no, dude, you're I, on TV. You're on yeah, TV. You no, get more. You get more views than me. Nah, no, no, patch, patch. Uh, hold up, we got a, uh, we got another cut. I uh, hate when that happens. No, you're right. Now we're back. All right, uh, what? Um, uh, yeah, Patrick goes. Um, oh yeah, uh, you know, uh, my buddy runs this YouTube thing. You know, what do you think about doing an interview? And I go, oh, you know, what's his name? He goes, Drifter. I go, Drifter. Like the YouTube guy drifted. He's like, yeah. I'm like, yeah. Uh, you just totally cut out during all that excitement. I will assume it's uh, endless praises. <laughs> it was, uh, yeah. I, I, it was, it was a lot of love. <laughs> uh, it's okay. But yeah, it, it's funny how that works too. Or somebody like PewDiePie. Good lord, it's just a whole different level. I literally was just watching the South Park episode on it. I, I, I you know, I think he's hilarious. And then I sort of, you know, I, I sort of loved it. It's so accessible for you guys to just uh, broadcast your messages to the world through something like YouTube. It's an amazing platform. Yeah, the the barrier to entry is super low. Basically, if you can buy a laptop with a built-in webcam, you're you're kind of good to go. That's it. Yeah, um, and it's kind of scary too, knowing that anything you do out in public can be just broadcast like that because everyone oh, has yeah. a newscast station in their in their pockets now. So that happens to me. Like when I go to PAX, are you going to PAX Australia? No, no. Okay. I'm going to try and get to E3 at some point. But, okay, um, well, I'll, I'll probably be at E3 this year if you go. Okay, we'll, we'll get in touch. We'll get Definitely. a nice selfie going. That's what people do nowadays, right? They, yeah, yeah, I'll take selfies. But no, so I do that a lot. <laughs> like, I take a lot of selfies with people, and I see it. But then, like, some other tweets come in of, like, pictures of, like, from behind me. Or, like, I'll go take a break and sit on a bench, and there'll be, like, a picture, like, look, Drifter's on his phone. And I'm like, what the oh, hell wow. is this? Or, like, some another YouTuber, <laughs> a friend of mine, is, is T. Martin. Uh, he went yeah. to the Bahamas with his girlfriend, and somebody yeah. tweeted a picture of him asleep on the beach. Like, a fan just walked up where he was sleeping on the beach and took a picture. I was like, oh, God, that's so creepy. <laughs> no, I'd, I'd, I'd probably go home and chuck on some Avril Lavigne songs and just cry for a good couple of hours because that's the way to deal with things like that. So, uh, uh, But, yeah, no, I'm, uh, I'm excited. I'm excited for the year. I'm excited for you guys to check out the show. And um, definitely... Uh, if you're looking for just a bit of fun popcorn TV, um, it's quite zany. Uh, it's very out there. It's very campy, um, but it's a whole lot of fun. Um, definitely check out the librarians, guys. All right, good. Well, it's nice to interview you. I'm glad you came on the channel. And thank uh, you. Guess I'll see you at E3. All right, absolutely. Take it easy, mate.